I'm Eric Newton, and this is The Together Show. We all know relationships take work, but what is that work, and how do we do it? As a former divorce lawyer, I've watched thousands of couples break up firsthand. Having seen the worst in relationships, I decided to try to help couples stay together. So on this show, we talk to real couples and find out what love really looks like. Like what I feel like we need to make kind of progress on is more just the the short term of like, how is our relationship going to operate for the time being? Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for listening. We're trying something new this month. We're posting recap episodes on Fridays that highlight some of our very early shows and in which we answer listener email. We'd love to know what you think, so don't be shy about reaching out. You can always email me at host at together.guide. Now onto the show. Today's episode is about a decision that we all seem to face, but about which there is no perfect answer. Should we break up or should we work through the challenges and stay together? And there can be no perfect answer because we can never know what might have been. The best we can ever do with that puzzle is finally just to choose and then do our best to empower that choice. But that is so much easier said than done, and particularly so when we're looking in from the outside. Because choosing whether or not to stay with somebody that you love is not only impossibly difficult, the answer is bound to leave us with more questions. And that's the issue that our guests are exploring today. Rachel and Tom are in love, and yet as they both say, that's just not enough. Earlier this year, Rachel wrote a story about her conflicts with their love affair, and it gained quite a lot of attention. It's called Sleeping with a Gentrifier. I'll put a link to it in our show notes. In that story, she ultimately chooses love in the face of internal conflict. But fast forwarding to the recording of our interview, they're back at the crossroads. So we're picking up the discussion at a point where I've just noticed that this elephant is sitting in the room and we're turning to talk about it. So with that, let's go to our interview with Rachel and Tom. Wow. Sitting with you guys is fascinating. Right now. <laughs> it's so electric in here. Mm. <laughs> we're pretty electric individuals. <laughs> if I may, I, can I talk about it? Yeah, please? sure. You guys are... Um, so tender right now Mm -hmm. it's 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 uh it's like sitting with two people who've just had a death but are processing (laughs) it slightly differently um and Uh, it's obviously it's obviously has to do with your relationship so i can't wait to ask you about it but yeah Yeah. but the 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 feeling i keep having is um you have you each have this immense affection for each other Mm -hmm. but you're both scared of it like like you want to have this affection and you kind of like want to reach forward but it's like you're scared of the electric shock that comes as a result of Mm -hmm. not just the other person but the affection for the other person it's really it makes me want to smile and sort of cry at the same time you know okay yeah yeah i can see that i i mean i think part of that is that as rachel mentioned earlier like We've, we have been going through a bit of a, a difficult time surrounding all this most recently. And, and so it's, it's a, uh, a very uh, vulnerable, or, or I'm not sure what the word is, thing yeah. to, to discuss it in, well, at all, but particularly in a context like this. On a, on a recording, you guys, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we don't, by the way, have to use this if you don't want to, but I'm just I think it's okay. honored oh, yeah. that you would even consider it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll let you know if there's something we that comes up that we feel like can't go in or okay. something. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what's going on? Do you want to? Well, yeah. So I moved out. Some of that was because of grad school. I wanted to be in this, be bikeable from school and to have like the space to do my own thing for school. And some of it was because I wanted space in the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been, um, well, since the beginning, we've, we've dealt and I've dealt with like fear of commitment stuff. On my part, Tom's not afraid of committing at all. Um, so yeah, that's been like a, kind of like a constant thing. And 
um, yeah, so now we're at a place, it feels, for me, it feels good to have more space. And for Tom, it feels bad, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think backing up a step, I mean, you mentioned commitment. I would say it's commitment is a big part of it. For a long time, earlier in the relationship, it wasn't just sort of like a, a lack of commitment, but I think Rachel had kind of, at times, a, a pretty strong, like, uh, sort of flight response. Yeah, like I wanted a, to flee constantly. Every time, yeah. every time something would go, every time there were problems, real or perceived. Which happen a lot. Uh, sure do. Uh, yeah, Rachel's go-to for a long time was like, better, better get out. I don't think this is working. Um, and I would kind of talk her down essentially. I mean, it's obviously a very concise summary of yeah. many long conversations, but, um, and then sort of fast forward to where we are now, Rachel decides that she wants to move out because she wants more space and I am unsuccessful in talking her out of it. Out of that, um, and so in some ways the tables have turned, I guess, a little bit. In that now, from my perspective, it's like, okay, well, you're taking this step that you need to take, um, but while historically it's been me kind of holding it together, I guess, in in that I, I've been unafraid of commitment and not had the impulse to like kind of call it quits if, if, things, if we're going through a rough patch or something right now we're going through a rough patch that's kind of like uh sort of a d- directly caused by this this sort of logistical change in our lives and so i'm kind of looking to rachel to be like okay well if you're going to do this you also need to sort of shoulder the responsibility of being the one who is holding it together so to speak is 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 demonstrating uh not necessarily long term commitment but commitment to like kind of make make things work right yeah it's like you want her reassurance that mm-hmm. she wants to be in it and that you're that's that's right right because in so many ways it's like well you've got one foot out the door now right mm-hmm. um, and so yeah reassurance but also just like I don't feel like I can continue to be the one who's like, no, like, don't worry. Things will be good. Sort of like, and, and, and sort of convincing her that like, Oh, uh, we're going to figure things out. If there's, there's kind of a rough patch we go through. Um, instead I'm kind of looking more to Rachel to, to do that. And is there a flavor for you underneath it all? of questioning whether you're good enough or like you're a good person or something yeah. in that realm. It's it's interesting. Not really. Other people have asked me that too. Uh, I, I, I was picking up on it, so I thought maybe that's what it was. I think, yeah, Other I mean... people have asked you that? Yeah. In what, on what context? Well, essentially just like, wow, you must feel really rejected. Oh, oh. oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't really feel like this has seeped all the way down into sort of like my sense of self-worth or anything like that. Which is cool if it hasn't. Yeah, it is cool if it hasn't. It, it has, however, like caused me to have for kind of the first time, like a lot of real serious questions about like whether this relationship is yeah, kind yeah. of going to work. Okay. So Rachel, from for what's going on for you? Um, some of it is space feels good because I'm pretty focused on what I'm doing now in school. And that's like, even at week three of being in school, it's like pretty all consuming. And some of it, yeah, I mean, we've talked about this a bunch, um, never on the air before. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but I just have doubts about our compatibility long term. Right. Yeah. But the open question is like, well, how do you reconcile those doubts about long-term compatibility 
with uh, kind of the practical necessities of needing to make decisions about the short term. Right. Yeah. Shrug. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, wait, I can kind of see that. I mean, you're saying she needs to decide where she wants to live. No, I'm, I'm saying um, when, when we talk about kind of why it's difficult that we're now living separately, that yeah. kind of thing, yeah. Rachel often sort of refers to this, um, this doubt or, or uncertainty around whether we're kind of like well-matched for the, the, the long, long term, right? Yeah. Um, and, and that is an interesting question right and that's that's a a great thing to discuss but like what i feel like we need to make kind of progress on and decisions around is more just the the short term of like how is our relationship going to operate for the time being or should it continue to operate for the time being yeah like yeah which is also are we to read to the longer term stuff like do Uh, we want to continue with the short term if if the long term isn't that's right and historically you've said yes you do want to continue although maybe you've revisited that now go ahead i was just kind of making that comment yeah i don't know i mean i just have the so this is um yeah i think it's the things that i see as incompatibilities tom doesn't so I just think they're surmountable. Right. He thinks everything is surmountable. Not everything, just the, the <laughs> incompatibilities we've discussed. Yeah, everything in our relationship seems in seems surmountable to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I often bring up these what feel like unsolvable incompatibilities in our relationship, and Tom gets really frustrated with it because we can't actually solve the unsolvable incompatibilities. So there's like nothing we can do with them. Right. And it's even worse than that because it's like, okay, Rachel, do you feel like these unsolvable compatibilities are sufficient that we should no longer be in our relationship? Jeannie's question, exactly what, well, the research is all over this. There's a lot of um, writing about this. Mm -hmm. Um, which indicates that unsolvable problems are inevitable. Uh, like really intractable unsolvable problems are inevitable. It's not a matter of when they'll, uh, if, but when they'll arise. And, you know, couples hit this point where, well, we're never going to get around this one. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. What do you do? Yeah. And there's no one answer for that, of course. But uh, the work around them is not so much solving an unsolvable problem because of course by definition it can never be done but more how do we live with it in a way that works for us if we're going to stay together Mm -hmm. um which isn't so much a work around as a transformation of people around Mm -hmm. it Mm -hmm. uh but first you have to answer whether it's a deal breaker that's That's right that's the threshold that's Right. right and so if we aren't interested in solving these theoretically i'm also I guess part of it is that I'm not convinced that all of these are in fact unsolvable, but whatever, let's put that aside and and assume that they are. Yeah. Then the question becomes like, well, are are these deal breakers as you succinctly put it? Right. Um, To which Rachel's response is typically, I don't know. I don't know if it's a deal breaker. Yeah. And maybe this is too meta, but at some point you have to decide if not knowing if they're deal breakers is a deal breaker. Yeah. That's so, right. So you guys are both in an inquiry simultaneously. Yeah. yeah. Uh, huh. Okay. Well, obviously you don't have answers to those things. Um, what are you doing to get to answers to those things? I'm taking space. Mm-hmm. I've been talking it through with people. Um, with like close friends, that kind of thing. And, and to, to a certain extent, I'm also like trying to slowly apply pressure to Rachel to like figure it out, figure some, some stuff out. It's not like figure it out. Like, Oh, you need all the answers right now kind of a thing. But what we need to figure out is like, 
here, here's my, my bar, so to speak, or my threshold is, can you figure enough out that you feel good committing to our relationship at least on some level. I fully assume, kind of because of what Eric was just saying, that there will continue to be, like, you know, hard hard questions and things that we don't know how to yet work around or through or what have you. Um, those, those aren't, I think this is what it fundamentally comes down to, those aren't the questions that are super important to me. I recognize that they're, they're going to be there. What is important to me is even acknowledging those questions. Can we commit to figuring it out? Commit to committing. Commit to committing. So to speak, yeah. You know, what, I, what kept coming up for me again was given that you could both find other people and be happy or be alone and be happy and given that it's just true that there is a spectrum of relationships from easy to hard Mm -hmm. within the healthy spectrum, which Mm -hmm. this is pretty darn healthy, by the way, you know, the way you two talk, it's solid. Thanks for doing that. Um, why would you stay? Because I love her. Simple as that. Yeah. Which is not enough forever. Yeah. But it's enough that I don't think I can, in good conscience, just say, eh, plenty of fish in the sea. <laughs> right. Right. You're right, though. I'm not worried about being alone for the rest of my life. And neither is Rachel, I don't think. No. But you have answered your question regarding the unsolvable problems. Yeah. Except the unsolvable problem of her not wanting to solve unsolvable problems. That's right. (laughs) That's right. Okay. All right. So, Rachel, why would you stay? Mm, Because I love him also. And also love is not enough. And also love is not enough. Wow. You guys, you are right in it. Yeah. Yeah. Told you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, what what should I be asking you about here? I don't What's the know. thing I missed? I mean, I think there are questions to be asked around like I think for me, the fundamental incompatibility, I mean, maybe this is just a rephrasing of what we've been saying. But the fundamental compatib- incompatibility I see is I don't really know if you're a person who can commit. Mm. Well, what if she wasn't? That would be a deal breaker. It would. Yeah. What is? Commi- I guess what I'm saying is I'm not sure that she can commit to our relationship. But increasingly... My suspicion is that maybe it doesn't have anything to do with me or us. Never does. What, what, what is commitment? I mean, I would start with just the words, right? Like, whatever you think commitment is, like, whatever it is, Rachel's unwilling to do it. Well, but what is it for you? For me, it is... I think what it comes down to is is intention around the unsolvable problems. Like, it, it is the recognition that things are sometimes going to be hard. There are sometimes going to be things that are, like, really... Uh, where you're, you're just opposed on something, right? And commit if you're committed, then you are... You, you you are gonna figure out a way to make it work. Yeah. You are gonna you are gonna come to these situations from the perspective of I don't know what it's gonna take or how this is gonna go, but I know where we're gonna be on the other side of it. Mm-hmm. It's a certainty about some outcome. Yeah. 
Well, maybe not a certainty, but like a default assumption that when they're when they're unsolvable problems, the uh, you, the first response is how can we figure it out, not sort of well, maybe this means we're done. Yeah, yeah, and. Yeah. Uh, um, so that answers the question with regards to the specific issue, mm. but uh, even more abstract and 10,000 feet up from that, what is a commitment? What is a commitment? I, I actually really do think that's kind of the, the core of the, the abstract thing though. A commitment is, a commitment is um, sort of saying and then doing what it takes to sustain something like a relationship, yeah, even in the face of adversity or challenges, yeah, obstacles, yeah, okay, like it's not a commitment if it's sort of it takes no effort, right uh-huh. uh-huh. Then it's just sort of like, well, maybe you aren't committed. Maybe you're just kind of go like taking the path of least resistance, right? And that's not that doesn't really feel the same. Yeah. Okay. I see what you mean. But it's it's commitment. It's like it's it's like perseverance, you know. Uh huh. Dedication. Yeah. To a cause. Or a person. Yeah. It's it's almost like the perseverance. The degree of perseverance tests whether you're actually committed yeah like a commitment is a is a is a statement of yeah what that's you're, right what you're going what's going to happen right but then challenge arises yeah. and then what right the versity tests whether it really is We're, that's right yeah okay all right okay so we got a little abstract there but i, I want to do it with you too rachel yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck uh is a commitment actually for you mm. Yeah, I mean, I guess I kind of have adopted Tom's definition. I don't know how I would have defined it before. Um, You mean in this last moment you've adopted that? No, I mean, we've talked about it before. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah, and it feels like a, yeah, it feels like a mindset thing to me. Like the mindset that, you know, you're going to do this thing and you're going to figure out a way to take care of that and solve problems that come up. And yeah, yeah. yeah. And is it, f- is it fair to say that you don't commit to things or I don't I remember how he put it? No, I do. I mean, I think for me, I try out a lot of things and I am impulsive about leaving them and stuff, but that's how I learn whether or not they're the right thing. Well, okay, let me ask this. If you did know that this wasn't the right relationship, would you say it? (laughs) Um, Well, there have been times when I have known that it wasn't the right relationship, but I don't know where to trust that feeling. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. yeah. And that is a... That is such a challenging place to be. It's the yeah. perfect example a- answer to my question <laughs> that leaves you stuck again. Yeah. That's right. Wow. And it's challenging for me too because it's not even like I can kind of read between the lines mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because it's so clear that it's like I, I said earlier, like when, when she first mentioned like, oh, I don't know about our relationship. And I was like, yeah, it's true. She really doesn't know. That's the thing. It's like the that feeling is completely genuine and it's very clear even from where I'm kind of standing and it's been clear during those times that Rachel's referring to where she felt certain that this was not the right thing Mm -hmm. but then there have been other times where that was not the right feeling or that was not the feeling right and so because of these these waves of, of emotion. I, I don't really know what to trust either. Right. Right. 
Yeah. Because if she, if she says, I know, I know this is, I just, this doesn't feel right. I can, I can refer back to multiple other times in the past where like, you know, as far as two years ago, where we had a similar conversation about basically the same thing. And after, you know, several rounds of discussion and a, a, a little bit of time, she felt quite differently. Yeah. So the question for me is like, you know, is this, is this something that has come up over and over again because it's not the right fit or is it something that's come up over and over again because I'm just learning how to deal with longer term relationships? Yeah. Yeah. And recall that Rachel's previous relationships have all ended much sooner than this yep. in kind of a, a very dramatic fashion. I don't know, but I'm guessing that some of these earlier times when they've come up could have ended up being another example of that, right? Maybe it feels different. You know, in some... I mean, it, you can never actually know this. There, there is actually no answer to this. It strikes me for either of you, really. Mm. But um, since it's more poignant for you, Rachel, uh, you can't actually know whether, which one of those it is. And you, and you also can't know if he's the quote-unquote right one, whatever the heck that means, nor can you, that she is. All you can do is choose. Whoa, what a bastard that fact is. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But, you know, I feel like I've actually been very comfortable with that for a long time. Uh, that all you can do is choose. And, and then, I felt good about choosing Rachel. And then go with your choice. That's right. And then suffer the consequences. That's right. Because it, it might turn out that this, ne- this feeling never goes away. And that that would be a very uncomfortable life. Unless you like this. Do you like, do you, I mean, because that's arguable too, you know, I mean, if your choices put you in, in, a, in a place where you don't have to choose or choices. No, I don't like this. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Or you could go into a new relationship, be single for a while and then go into a new relationship and discover, ah, same feelings. Yeah, I could. Which you arguably wouldn't really know about until a couple of years in. Right. Because right, you've got to wait for that time to pass. Uh, how, what is that? You've, you must have thought through that before. Where yeah. does it leave you? Um, well, I think it leaves me with... Um, I have to think of it not as like whether is Tom the right one? And if not, I need to go find the right one. Right. right. But more like, is, is Tom right? Like, is Tom right for now or for my, for the, um, for at least the medium term or would I rather be on my own? Yeah. And that's what you don't know the answer to. Yeah, I don't know. But I think that's that's part of why living on my own is helpful, right? It's like, you know. Gives you enough space to kind of test it out a little bit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> why, are you, why are you chuckling? Just because, like, we had so many conversations about what the motivation was for her moving out. And, like, uh, I think all of the insistence that it's anything other than putting one foot out the door is well, but kind of BS. Sp- space is the same thing. Yeah. It's not the same at all. It is. Taking space. You can take space and still... And simultaneously, you know, c- commit to the relationship, right? Like, there's nothing that precludes that. Or you can take space 
as an experiment to see if maybe you don't want to be in the relationship. Mm. And I think it's pretty clear which of the two it is. Yeah. And I think if I was a less patient person. Yeah. Well, if you I were less, still be here. If you were a less patient person, you would have been gone a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a new acknowledgement? That my patience is what? The one before that. The, um... She's one foot out, one the, foot door. out the door. Why um, she's one foot out the door, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's not the first time it's been discussed, but yeah, I think that is the first time that Rachel's admitted it. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and yeah. You, you say it with a smile. Is that yeah, because... I feel it, uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable, right yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, as you should. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Because you don't want to hurt him. Uh, <laughs> no, because she's being called out. Yeah, because uh, I'm being called She's being called, called out. out in this semi-public <laughs> forum. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I also don't want to hurt him. Yeah. That's <laughs> sure, throw, <laughs> throw that on the list, too. <laughs> no. no, not like right this second, but that's a big, that's a big motivator for me. Being here, sticking around, yeah. Happy to share a story, but you looked like you were going to say something. So. Well, yeah. I mean, I want to ask Rachel then, <laughs> if that's a big motivator, are you not motivated by any kind of benefit to yourself? No, I am. Also or are you only kind of keeping the other foot in the door for my sake? No. I you don't. sure? I don't know. <laughs> You're covering your eyes, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think I just don't really worry about myself in general. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, wait a minute. You moved out for you. Yeah. Isn't that, like, a huge example of worrying about yourself? Like, me flailing around or, like, deciding to end things, even if we can figure it out, like, that, like, for me... I think I would be fine, whatever the outcome. I think you would be fine, too. Mm -hmm. But, like, I think I try and keep... I try and, like, be a little more cautious and give things more time and give things more chance because I care about you and because I want to take care of you and because I love you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that is what carries me through parts when I want to leave. Yeah. Consideration of my feelings is what carries you through. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking in particular of a conversation we had, um, must have been three weeks ago now. It was before I, I left on my trip. And th this, this was actually me, me bringing up, up a problem. It wasn't you bringing up a problem. It was, I was saying, like, look, it's been summarizing. It, it's been very difficult having you moved out for a couple of weeks now. Um, and I really need more, more support from you around expressing confidence that we're going to like get through this tough time and, uh, that, you know, things will be okay and that kind of thing. And your, your response was, well, uh, paraphrasing here, I don't know if things are going to be okay. Here are these fundamental incompatibilities I see with us. Yeah. I don't know if things are going to be okay. And it feels unreasonable to ask me to be certain supportive, about them. Yeah. Not supportive. I want to support you, <laughs> but it feels unreasonable for you to tell me that I have to be the one who like is certain about things because I not, <laughs> I, I guess what I'm trying to highlight with this example is a situation where, it's, it should have been even easier than normal, right? Because it wasn't you bringing up a problem. It was me bringing up a problem. Um, but the response was one of these, like, shutdowns. Was it? Or was it just different than what you wanted? Like I think it was a shutdown. We even talked about it at the time. Remember, I, I expressed frustration that, like, I didn't feel like I could really do anything with this sort of statement about 
long-term insurmountable incompatibilities. Like yeah. not only did it make me feel worse, it also like presented no opportunity for further discussion. Yeah. And it kind of just turned the table back on me to try to piece this together. It, am I yeah, but remembering then, this differently? I don't know. I don't really remember. Well, I don't too. totally understand either because, um, well, because like she said, if you were asking the person who isn't certain mm-hmm. to give you certainty, but she couldn't. I wasn't asking for certainty like commitment. I was asking for short-term reassurance while we go through this difficult time that we would get through the difficult time, not that we would be together forever. And you couldn't do that? No. And And instead, and so again, I want to highlight this short-term nature of it Yeah. because because the response was was like, well, here are these kind of very long-term problems I see, which I'm only bringing up as an example oh, of, yeah. like tying this back to what we were talking about a minute ago, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because it's an example of a conversation we've had since you've moved out where this um, kind of pattern of throwing into the conversation sort of a... Large unsolvable problem. Yeah, it's kind of like a boulder in the middle of the road was kind of the... Well, now, you mentioned that at the very beginning of our conversation, too, and I, and I meant to address it then. You said she can't talk about the short term because of the long term, I think. And you're like, I just want to talk about the, just the short term for now so that we can kind of baby step it to the long term, I think is what you were suggesting. And then, right? And then you... That is roughly how I feel. Roughly. I don't think I put it quite that way, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah totally my words. Okay, and then Rachel, you were saying, yeah, but I mean, I, I mean, if it's not going to work out, then why protract it? Like, and, and why ignore that it's not going to work out just so we can make ourselves feel good yeah. in the short term? And then... He says, well, yeah, but you, you're not saying that. You're saying it might not work out in the long term. Therefore, we're stuck in the short term. Um, did I get all that right? That's that one way you could true say true to it. me, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I totally get that. Um, yeah, because if it's not going to work out in the long term, sheesh. Yeah, what are we doing? What are you, what are you doing? Um, and then I totally get that, but so then what are we doing? Yeah. Uh, and Because you do have to do something in the now. Mm-hmm. Doing nothing is doing something. Mm-hmm. Um. So I guess we're back to the crux of it, aren't we? Yeah. That you're you're actually wanting to do nothing right now. Yeah. Your your proactive choice is actually to do nothing because that's how you can sort things out. That's how you can. That's how things will sift for you into the shape that they're going to take, and you can't force that. Do you think that's why you have the impulse to kind of throw these intractable? turns into the conversations we have about this? I think my concerns are legitimate. That's why Uh, I keep bringing them up. um, No one... I'm not talking about whether or not they're legitimate. They can be intractable and legitimate. Yeah, I guess, like, they feel relevant to what we're dealing with. So... hmm. You but think but the question relevant. is, no, the question is not whether or not they're relevant, nor whether or not they're legitimate. Whether they're deal breakers. That's, yeah, that's one, one question. question. And the other question is, well, if they're not deal breakers or if we aren't sure if they're deal breakers or not. Then what do we do about it? Then what them? do we do about it? Yeah. And that, that's the part that yeah. is missing. The, well, for me. Is any kind of like 
even seeming interest in. But for me, I'm still at the, are they deal breakers? I see. Yeah. And so you don't think there's any kind of useful discussion to be had until you figure that out. I, I'm imagining the these things, these issues called the potential deal breakers as these rocks that are in a box. And uh, when you guys talk about anything um, with regards to the relationship, your inclination is to take the rocks out of the box and put them all on the table and say, see, 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 see. <laughs> <laughs> and his inclination is to say, whoa, 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 what about the table? Yeah. And um, that you guys should have an agreement about when the rocks are in the box and when they're in the table. <laughs> because yeah. you want him to know those rocks well. Yeah. <laughs> which he should, yeah. <laughs> as far as I can tell. Yeah. Whether it's a table discussion or a rock discussion. Yeah. Yeah. I think that makes sense. I I think though I think like what I'm what I keep expecting is for Tom to like have the same rocks as me or like recognize the same rocks but actually I think I just need to be alone with the rocks and think about the rocks. Yeah. Yeah. It does seem like that's what you're asking for is is time yeah. to deal with the rocks on your own. Yeah. As long as he's not ignoring them, it was something that I felt like you were saying before. As long as he acknowledges that the rocks are there, yeah, he might have a different view of what that what they're about. But yeah, and I kind of need to think about just decide whether or not those rocks are deal breakers. And... Yeah, because really, only you can answer that question. He can't. He's already answered yeah. that question. Yeah, and how do you answer that question? That's yeah. right. And I think that's actually one of the reasons that like taking the rocks out of the box and putting them on the table and saying, see, look at the rocks is so frustrating is because yeah, I can't do anything about them. Right. And like the way you're presenting them is as something that is like, I've been calling insurmountable throughout our, our kind of time here, but really it's more a question of like, you need to decide whether they're insurmountable yeah. or not. Yeah, I guess I kept taking them out expecting that you would also see what I saw and feel like they were big deals, unsolvable mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. but actually, like, you're okay with a lot of them. Well, now, that's a whole separate conversation that you could request and have, you know, because that's also legitimate. The the thing that I, I've noticed that maybe you guys are super self-aware, but if there's one place where maybe you're not, because we haven't talked about it much, but one place where you, Tom, might be having some challenge is acknowledging her experience of her experience, like mm -hmm. the legitimacy of her experience mm -hmm. because it is an experience. Mm -hmm. That's um, what I was trying to get at. I think you said it better than me, but Yeah, so you it, so it's okay to be like, okay, today is a rocks discussion, and this is how this rock is for me do you see that this rock is this way for me? Yeah. And then he would say, yeah, I see that that way is for you. And then, but it's not that way for me. And he'd be like, no, no, no I don't care how it is for you. <laughs> I want you to get how it is for me. And then you could, um, talk about the rock. Yeah. So maybe we just need to have like a, that seems like a thing that we could schedule. Yeah, or just request in the moment. But yeah. as long as it's clear what it is, wh yeah. which conversation it is. That's right. Is it a conversation about the rocks or is it a conversation not about the rocks? Yeah. yeah. And if it's a conversation not about the rocks, can't. Can't throw the rocks, throw out, the rocks there. out there. Yeah, that makes sense. And the table conversation, just to be clear about what that is, is, is the one that's most important to Tom most of the time these days. Because it's... Um, what what are we just what are we going to do right now hmm. right there might that, be something that is the, the table most that, that is the most important yeah. to me at the moment and the, and, then, and then there's the what are we going to do in the long term which yeah. is maybe which is also important but yeah. less important than the the sort of immediate term. yeah what are we going to do now um and the answer that the default answer has been the way the default answer has been we're going to take time it's just that the way you've been getting that is by putting the rocks on the table. So now you can just, yeah. 
Is that the right answer for right now? Yeah. Is time? That's what we've been saying, yeah. Yeah, time and maybe maybe we schedule a discussion about the rocks. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Well, thanks, guys. Thank it was you. Great, yeah, it was a great pleasure to be here. Well, that's it for our interview with Rachel and Tom, folks. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to read Rachel's story that blew up on the internet this summer, it's called Sleeping with a Gentrifier, and I'll put a link to it in our show notes. If you liked what you heard on our show today, please subscribe to us on iTunes. It makes a big difference when you do that. Please also consider donating to our Patreon campaign. We're on a mission to crush shame, as you may know, and every penny really helps. You can find our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash together. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash together. If you have any questions or comments, or if you'd like to be on the show, please reach out via one of our platforms. You can find our website at www.together.guide. Our Facebook page is facebook.com slash together show. Twitter and Instagram are both at together underscore show, or you can email me at host at together.guide. That's all for today, folks. See you next time.